And I'm Emily. And this is Attila the Hun. That's not even funny. We're doing him at school. He murdered his brother, then swept across Europe with his Mongol hordes. Oh, shut up and just get rid of him, OK? Doesn't smell good, does he? Joe! What a good bells in it. Mind you, I don't suppose you get much chance of a shower on your way to overthrow the Holy Roman Ember. Just get... OK. Listen, um, do you reckon you could uh, kind of make yourself Mom. scarce for the moment? And Dad? <laughs> Their bits can burn, Douglas. Had a midlife crisis and decided they quite liked each other, but not enough to actually live together or be married or anything. So they separated. And then Mum met Roger. And he had three children. David, Felicity and Robbie. Oh, stop! I can't breathe! I'm sorry. Oh, we've got to do something about this. That's bitter. So anyway, Roger came round for dinner with Mum and you wrecked it. I didn't. The itching powder on the sofa, the inky soap, the frog mug. Yeah, OK, but he took it really well. It was like a test to prove he wasn't a boring, crusty old grown-up and had a sense of humour. No, it wasn't. It was a small boy who just got a package of practical jokes in the post and had no patience, self-control, common sense or manners and had a brain the size of a kidney bean. In fact, he even bought you a little present in return, didn't he? You promised you weren't going to mention that. Bad luck. I lied. Wow! A present! Where is it? In the shed. Brilliant! In the shed? OK, so it's not exactly a present. What exactly is it? It's a large bucket of gun, stretched from my pond at home, balanced precariously on the half-open shed door. I honestly don't know which of you is worth. <laughs> that is just so excellent. Quits? <laughs> So Joe hadn't wrecked Mum's love life after all, which was just as well, really, because Mum and Roger were getting on like a house on fire. And he rendered the derailleur on my bike, which was excellent. Doing all those romantic things you do when you first meet someone, going for long walks in the countryside. Going to the cinema. Gloria, you're the woman I've been waiting for all my life. My husband. Todd. George. He's got a gun. Visiting the zoo. In fact, Mum said they had their first kiss in front of the piranha tank. It's disappeared. What has? My car. But it can't be that far away unless it made a bid for freedom and slipped out the front door heading for the main road. Have we got onto the children from hell yet? Just wait, OK? We're getting there. So, Mum and Roger had reached the kissing stage and he and Joe were doing some serious bonding over Joe's model Saturn V rocket. Lucky escape. Found the leg of the moon lander unit in the dust bag. Oh, brilliant. Got some glue? Yeah. yeah. Great. I'll go and stick it on now before it goes AWOL again. And Emily and Roger were bonding by playing loads of football. He's doing it from the corner to the far post! <laughs> yes! Oh! Having him around. And I was thinking that maybe if they got together on a more permanent basis, and maybe if Mum and Dad got divorced, it would be sad, but you know, Roger would make a pretty cool stepdad. Can we do it now? What? The children from hell! No, I'll have to wait. We said we'd be at Dad's. Come on. Oh my car! It's gotta be somewhere. Five seconds, and it'll be in his bedroom. Hit the gas. Get across the living room. Into the kitchen, out through the old cat flap, down the street, onto the motorway, and freedom. Right. Let's do it. <laughs> Holy brake pads. Blood! <laughs> And, of course, the other thing about Roger was that Dad didn't know about him yet. Look, I found it. That's wonderful. Now, if you don't mind... But someone stamped on it! Well, I'm sure it can be fixed. And he probably didn't want to know about Roger either. Have you thought about the possibility that Jane might find herself someone else? No. 
And if I keep working long hours and staring into my computer screen every evening, I can probably carry on not thinking about it for a very long time indeed. This is Jennifer. We all went to her for counselling when things were really messy. Dad, can you mend my radio control car? Well, I could try. But Dad's carried on seeing her. Because he's a mess. You know, like when he's in the house all on his own and he misses us. Or when we're there and you've used up all the hot water. Or you've got peanut butter in the TV remote. Or if you... You don't mind. I'm trying to have a confidential discussion with your father. Yeah, sorry. Catch you later, OK? Right. Come on, trouble. I mean, it was sad. Once upon a time, Dad was really chirpy and energetic, and he did all these things with us. Like taking us to museums. Oh, shrunken heads. Brilliant! Oh, yes, I remember these. They used to cut their enemies' heads off, then scoop out the brains from the skull, and then fill them full of hot sand until they dried up and shriveled. Lovely. Wow! I'll need to do that to me when I'm dead. Then you can put me on the mantelpiece and scare everyone who comes round. Please. <laughs> do you think you can mend it? Well, I'm rather busy at the moment. But you're not doing anything. Feeling sorry for myself can be very time-consuming. Except after Mum and Dad separated, Dad didn't have quite as much energy anymore. Well, can't you feel sorry for yourself later, after you've mended my car? Go on, just do the haul or something. It always used to make you feel better. Come on, Dad. Oh, dear. All this fishing for sympathy isn't really working, is it? <laughs> so, how are things over at your mum's? Oh, what? Right. No exciting news, then. Unfortunately, Motormouth here has the brain of a hedgehog, so he just waded in. Oh, yeah, Mum's got this boyfriend. He's called Roger and he's great. He helped me build the Saturn V rocket model and this amazing treehouse with running water, double glazing and a stepladder. And he and Emily were playing football and she headed the ball to Mrs Winter's greenhouse. Over here, you. Look, Thicky, Dad doesn't want to know how this wonderful man has waltzed into Mum's life. They're still married, remember, so he's probably just the teensiest bit jealous. So don't go rubbing it in, OK? But it's all right, because he picks his nose all the time and he always gets bits of dinner stuck in his teeth. And whenever he's in the car, he always tries to run over cats. So, um, how's work, then? Oh, it's rather exciting, really. I'm flying off to Switzerland on Wednesday to help set up this programme for Interpol on their computer in Zurich. It's all part of the International Criminal Information Pooling System, this huge database of criminal records. You know, fraudsters, murderers, armed smugglers. Wow, that's amazing! Yes. Then I fly back here to start setting up the link with the police at this end. And then Dad and Joe get into this really long, yawnerama bloke's conversation about Colombian drug barons and gigabytes and random access digital how's your father drives until... Holy Moroni, we said we'd be back at six, didn't we? Come on, you catch you later, Dad. Oh, bye, Dad. Pratt. Remains von Impelig. Impid, uh, lost in a vault. Yes. <gasps> so, Roger's kids. Can we do it now, then? Yeah. The children from hell. I mean, Roger had mentioned that he had these three children. There was David, who was into music. Felicity, who rode horses. And Robbie, who was very creative and imaginative. He just forgot to say that they were also psychopaths. <laughs> so anyway, a couple of evenings later, Mum's in the middle of rustling up this supper for Roger when the phone rings. <coughs> yep. Yeah, just hang on a moment. Mum! It's the hospital. Oh, goodness. There'd been this crash on the A637. The local working men's outing coach had run into a paint lorry. No one was seriously hurt, but it was going to be all hands on deck to get everyone cleaned up. So. Right, thanks. I'm going to have to go into work. Can someone, um, careful, it's hot? <coughs> Can you give Roger a ring and tell him tease off? OK, I've got to fly. I'll call you from work. But we couldn't get through to Roger's on the phone. So we decided to wander around there, be nosy, check out his house and his kids. Dad, there's Wait. a couple of kids at the door, probably collecting for charity. Shall I tell them to shove off? It was number 54, wasn't it? I think so. Oh, yeah. But this must be, like, an insane asylum or something. I'm sorry, I think we've got the wrong number. You did this playing cricket in the hall, didn't you, you stupid pig? And anyway, Dad's at the shop brainless. Oh, hi! You must be Emily and Joe. I'm Felicity. Dad will be back in five minutes, but he's told me everything about you. Come in and sit down, and I'll get you some 
some juice and biscuits. I knew you were Emily because Dad's got a photo of your mum in the garden at your house and you're in the background. She looks really lovely, doesn't she? I think it's incredibly romantic. You know, the two of them. You sit there. Apple juice and fig rolls? Uh, fine. Didn't Roger say he had three children? <coughs> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I don't think so. I was thinking about driving this Ferrari <coughs> and being chased by an evil scientist <laughs> in a fighter plane and having to drive over this cliff. Well, try thinking about this. Oh. Just say Mum and Roger decided to, well, maybe stay together more kind of long term. You mean like get married or something? Can you imagine having Mr Air Guitar and the human motorcycle as your stepbrothers? Can you imagine actually sharing a house with them? And then, of course, the lovely Felicity would be my stepsister. Stepsister, I know! Wouldn't it be brilliant? I've always wanted an older sister. <laughs> Right. I hadn't thought about it before. If Mum and Roger got married, we we're going to be invaded by these hideous mutant children. You're so strange! I mean, it wouldn't have been so bad if they'd been really nice kids and had mountain bikes we could buy and help with maths homework hey. and slept in the shed. Take but that! I had a feeling it wasn't going to work out quite like that. Pig! Cow Pat! Benji. Who was he? Attila. He was king of the Huns in the 5th century and invaded Italy with his Mongol hordes. But... We're telling him at school. But... I hate you! I hate you! You always wreck everything! Whoa! Big fight! Big fight! We have to do something! Like what? If Mum and Roger are falling in love with one another, there's nothing we can do. Something like... Like... You can't come and live with us because... Because my mother's actually a vampire. Well, your blood test have come back, Mr Witherspoon. Oh. So tell me, what, what, what's the news? Well, your blood seems to be... Very tasty, indeed. <sighs> no, they'll never believe that. I know! Package has this incredibly dangerous disease which brings you out these hideous red boils and kills you in three seconds. Except that's a bit stupid because... Emily and me, we're, like, still alive, aren't we? And then I remembered... Bad! Switzerland! Interpol! Armed robbery, meetings with the police. It was a stroke of genius. Hello? Is anybody in there? What? Oh. Oh, well, that's a relief. Thought he might be brain dead. I was uh, thinking about Dad. Coming back from Switzerland next week. Oh, well, good for him. It's just that we haven't seen him for three years. Look, what are you on about? I mean, you don't go around telling everyone your dad's wanted for walking into the head office of Wexford Security with a machine gun and making off with two and a half million in used notes. That is just totally awesome. He's helping Interpol build up this file for the International Criminal Information Pooling System in Zurich. In return, he gets a pardon and he can come home again. And I'm thinking to myself that I really ought to stop him because this is like Dad we're talking about here. But it's just too entertaining watching these three looking like this. And he's got this incredible temper. I mean, I remember when I was really little and we're in this supermarket and this other man took the last pack of the chocolate digestives and Dad just went totally ape and tried to beat him to death with a frozen chicken. OK, Tommy, just drop the chicken. Keep away from me! Drop the chicken! I'm warning you! I'll use it! And then I started getting sensible and realised that if they told Roger all this gibberish, we were both going to be in hot water. So I said, he's winding you up, OK? Dad's a very quiet computer programmer who's never even had a parking ticket, let alone tried to murder someone. Whereas Joe here has a hyperactive imagination and tends to get a little bit carried away. So, if you could possibly avoid mentioning our dad being a major international criminal, it would save a lot of embarrassment all round. Oh, you've spoilt it now. And saved you from a major thick ear into the bargain. But David believed it all, of course. A, because he's a moron. B, because he thought it'd be really cool to meet someone who'd robbed two and a half million quid. And C, because I'm the most amazingly good actor. And he's getting this pardon and he's coming back from Switzerland because he's told them about uh, loads of other criminals and they're putting it into an international criminal information thingamy system. David, I worry about you sometimes. No, it's true. Emily said Joe was making it up, but she was just trying to keep it secret. I could tell. David, if someone told you to lie down in the middle of the road... No, no, no. Remember when you did lie down in the middle of the road because Nosh 
told you to? That was a bet. All oh, right, but it's a good job the brakes on the bus were working, isn't it? Come here, you little snot, right? It, David. So, since Joe and Emily had finally met David, Felicity and Robbie, I reckon it was about time Jane met them too. So... Roger rang Mum. Jane, hi. And decided to take the plunge and arrange a meal for the seven of us, so that Mum would finally know what she was letting herself in for, getting involved with this guy. Why don't I get started on the banisters on Saturday afternoon, as promised, and uh, you can cook a meal for us in the evening, yeah? One minute, I'm surrounded by 20,000 Mongol horsemen, and then, pfft, I'm sitting on this sofa between two snotty children. Your Mongolian is very good, by the way. It's very sweet of you to say so. I spent several years working in Ulan Batar after university. So what are David, Felicity and Robbie like, then? Am I going to have to pre-warn the neighbours and lock up all my breakables and hose the place down afterwards? Yes. What do you think? Blue and sporty or minty green crushed velvet? Is it going to be a spotty boy throwing up on the staircase kind of party? I sincerely hope not. Oh, crushed minty green velvet, then. So when are the children from hell coming round? Next Saturday. What is all this children from hell stuff? Isn't that the day that Dad gets back from Switzerland? <sighs> Holy moroni, I completely forgot. He said he popped round in the evening with some presents, didn't he? Oh, well, he and Roger are grown-ups. I'm sure they can manage a civilised conversation without it degenerating into a fist fight. I'll give him a ring and warn him. He'll be fine. I'll be fine. Honestly, I'll be fine. Men, you can read them like a book. Oh, that's nice. I'd go for the blue and sporty. You're meant to be listening to him. Really, it's no problem. Roger and I, we're grown-ups. We'll have a perfectly civilised conversation about painting and decorating, or the internet, or the roadworks on the ring road, or the weather. Yes, well, I was thinking of taking Jane and the kids skiing in the Alps in December. Brush up on my French and German while I'm there. Oh, right. Normally, I like to get in a bit of ice climbing. Joe is a little young for that at the moment, sir. But I promised to take him sailing on the yacht when the weather improves, just to make up for it. The yacht? Maybe you're getting things a little out of proportion. You know, I think your mum is right. The minty green crushed velvet is better. Oh, and you're meant to be listening to her, OK? I mean, look at it this way. What's the worst that can happen? You meet him. He's a nice guy. He and Jane are getting on well together. You chat. You leave. You feel down. You get over it. Actually, the worst that could happen involves some very powerful wood glue, a major punch-up. And a big jaggedy saw. But, of course, Jennifer had no way of knowing about that. So you got Dad to mend it for you, then? Nah, he decided it was too much hard work. Bought me a new one to stop me asking when he was going to mend the old one. Honestly, talk about taking advantage of someone when they're down. Hmm. I wonder if he could mend my old radio cassette player. Anyway, Saturday came round and Roger arrived to do his DIY stuff on the banisters. Hi. Hi. Looking forward to tonight, then? No. No. A bit nervous myself, actually. I mean, David, Felicity and Robbie can be a bit lively on occasion. Not to mention your dad popping around. Which happened sooner than expected, because Dad chickened out and decided to... Pop round early, say hello, hand over the presents, beat a quick retreat, Go home, pull my feet up, get depressed. But when Dad got to our house, the door was open, so he walked straight in. <coughs> Hello. Uh, is Mrs Parker in? No, she's just popped out down the shops. She won't be long. Um, ah, yes. I was wondering when she was going to get someone round to fix this. Uh, yeah. I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. You must think I'm completely crazy just wandering in off the street and sounding off. <laughs> I'm Jane's husband. Oh. Just popping round with some presents for Joe and Emily. <laughs> you probably bumped into Joe and Emily. Yeah, actually, Joe's in the kitchen making some tea. God, honestly, this place looks so grubby after Switzerland. And it's going to Switzerland. Switzerland. Switzerland, eh? On holiday, then? No, work. Yes, we did this deal with Interpol. <laughs> Helping out with ICIPS, International Criminal Information Pooling System. Yes, I went straight to Scotland Yard this morning from the airport, as a matter of fact, just to help out with a few things this end. And Roger realised that maybe it wasn't a very good idea at all to tell Dad who he was, or else he might end up visiting the fish in the local reservoir wearing a pair of concrete boots. Are you OK? Oh, yes. Completely fine. Fine. Right, then. Let's get down to business then, shall we?
Might as well help you out with this stuff while I'm standing around waiting for Jane. Oh, really, there's no need, Jane. I mean, Mrs Parker, she, she can no, be some No, 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 it's no problem. Now, let me see. Uh, this piece must oh, Don't go... touch that! That's covered in glue. Uh. Oh. oh, I'm so terribly sorry. No, 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 no. It's my fault. Please don't panic. It's completely fine. And then things really started to go downhill. Oh, Colin. Hello. Ah. I thought you were coming round later. Ah, I'm glad to see you've met me. Me! Yes, yes, he's met me. Are you all right? Derek! Right? Yes, absolutely fine, Mrs Parker. Apart from the fact that I seem a bit stuck with <sighs> Colin, your husband, and me, the man who's here to fix your banisters. Jane, I think this man is clinically insane. Plus, I seem to be permanently attached to him. Hello! Ah, ah those must be the children of your boyfriend, who is to arrive at some point later in the evening. Hi, Derek! Derek! Yes, hello, strange children who I've never met before. Uh, may I introduce you to Colin? This is Jane's husband, and he's just come back from Switzerland where he's done a deal with Interpol. Would somebody like to tell me what is going on here? Yes, hi. I'm Derek the decorator. And uh, I really should be heading home. So I come in, and Dad and Roger are stuck together. The children from hell look like they've seen the Headless Horseman, and Mum's confused, to say the least. And then Joe appears and says... Here's your tea, Roger. <laughs> to be your... You're Roger! Right, I've had just about enough of this. I've been glued to this maniac for long enough! Go on, Daddy! No! Oh! 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 Wow! If everyone could just hang on a moment, I think Joe might like to say a few words at this point. Huh? You know, armed robbery, Dad being a major international criminal, stuff like that. Ah! Well... Um, it was like this. So it all turned out OK in the end. Well, nobody had their head hacked off with a large saw at any rate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. And Dad and Roger got to meet one another at long last. And Mum got to meet the children from hell. And if they weren't exactly the best behaved children in the world, they were a lot better behaved than a certain small boy not a million miles from here. Who was it? Um, they're about... 20,000 Mongol horsemen standing in the street. Pilgrim's blood! <laughs> Snoglitz! He is such a disaster. Joe and Emily will be back at the same time next week. Do not go away. Mike Crisope is just over, isn't it? What am I talking about? News Round is coming up next.